Hello everyone, welcome to Foiling Friday. This is Carrie and I'm excited to be here again with you. Today we're talking all about how to use foil without heat. We're not using a laminator, we're not using any heat of any kind. We're doing this all just using some products that you might already have. And so today I'm going to talk about some of these, show you how to use them, and also go through some common mistakes and answer a few questions. So let's go ahead and get started with the very first way I wanted to talk about, and that's using glue dots. Now glue dots used to come on a roll like this, and if you're going to use glue dots with foil, you definitely don't want to touch it with your fingers so that you'll get a perfect circle. So what I do is I like to place it down on my paper just like that. And here is one of the common mistakes that I often see when people have trouble foiling with glue dots, and that is they use a foil that's either been used before or is a scrap foil and it doesn't want to stick. It could also be the wrong kind of foil to use this way, or also there's not quite enough pressure. So you can see how I'm having a few issues here getting this one off. I tried and I tried and I didn't get a very good result here. So if that happens to you or if you ever find this issue, then there could be a couple of problems. One is the foil that you're using or one is not enough pressure. So I'm gonna try it again. This time I'm using glue dot that comes in an applicator like this, which is so great because that makes sure that you don't touch it with your fingers. And I'm using another piece of scrap foil. This time I'm pressing down very hard with my bone folder. And I love doing it this way. If you want to, you can run it through your die cut machine as well to give it some good pressure. And that one worked much better. So I'm gonna keep on going. This time I'm just gonna keep using the same scrap foil, but I found some spots that hadn't really been used and this worked out so much better, look at that. So go ahead and try changing up your foil. Use your bone folder to get some good pressure on there. And that started working out really well. So this second one, that first one I used was a permanent st strong adhesive. It's the extra strength adhesive. Now I'm using the regular glue dots and you can see I'm using a part of the foil that hadn't been used before as well. And I got a really good result with that as long as I had the pressure going on well enough. And then I had to pull it up a different direction. So don't give up, keep on trying. This ended up being so beautiful. Now I'm gonna use some small mini glue dots for the rest of this design here. I did find that I had the best result with the extra strength permanent glue dots, and so you can try that, but it also worked with all these others. You can see here, I'm just putting it all over on the smaller ones too, pressing down with my fingers, and those ones were really simple. So I'm gonna finish out this design here, and then we'll move on to the next technique. If you find that a part of your foil didn't stick all the way to those glue dots, just use another piece of that foil, press it down, and that should pick up the foil so you've got a really full foiled circle there. So that's what I'm doing here, just making sure that I got some good results. And look at that, it's so pretty. Now some of it did go over. If you need to fix any parts of your foiling, you can use a craft knife to just kind of clean it up. You can also use a sand eraser and those are my two favorite ways to make sure. And this one I use my adhesive eraser to get rid of any of those little extra strings if you happen to have those. So there we go. There is our first result at foiling. This creates some really fun designs on your card. You can add them here and there, little spots, and it's really fun. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out this flower from this set, it's called Wonderful World of Flowers. It's a design by Eileen Hole, and I love this set. I thought it would be fun to color this up with foils. Have you ever colored with foils before? <laughs> Something that I really like to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stamp the, this out with some Eclipse Black ink, and then I'm gonna go ahead and color up a portion of that using my Copics. This is the part I'm not going to be using foil over, so I just wanted to get some color down. So for this one, I'm using some pinks and just going over that center there. And then for the leaves, I want to go around the outside with kind of a dark blue turquoise color. 
So I'm just going to color those in really quick and also that center vein, but the rest we're going to color up with foil. So after I get that color down there, I want to show you this next way to put foil on your projects and that's using Decafoil liquid adhesive. Now this is a really fun technique. I hadn't used liquid adhesive before. Uh, I used it for the first time a few months ago and now I'm hooked. Now this comes out rather quickly so you want to make sure you test it out first on a separate piece of paper and the best results I found is if you can get the same amount of a bead of glue on your project and this will foil perfectly every time. So watch this. I am just going to foil every other row on these leaves here. I'm going to do it on both of the leaves and if you get a little bit where you don't want it just clean it up with your magic wand. So that's what I did here. And then I'm going to finish putting the rest of the liquid adhesive over here on this leaf. So I'm trying to use the same amount of pressure when I push on this bottle. And that's going to give me a nice bead of this liquid adhesive. So there we go. Now this is one that is required to dry for longer. I decided I wanted to do another foiling technique on the flower portion, but first I'm going to allow the liquid adhesive to dry before I do that next portion. On the bottle it does say to allow it to dry for one to two hours depending on where you are. I set this aside and then forgot about it for a while. <laughs> but look at this. This is one that I had done earlier. I just created some leaves, the veins of this leaf with the liquid adhesive and then I added foil and it turned out really great. The fun thing about this liquid adhesive is that it dries kind of 3D. So you get more of a raised bead look than a flat look. So I like that. So we're gonna go back to that project a little while later. But for now, let's move on to the next strategy and technique and that's using some really strong double-sided adhesive. I have here some score tape that I'm using. This is a very, very strong, very, very sticky, and you can use this on your paper any way you want. You can put it on diagonally, horizontally, vertically. Today I'm gonna do some diagonal lines for this, and I'm just trying to place these the same distance apart from each other. Trying to get that lined up nicely and then just breaking it off with my fingers I'm going to clean up those edges in a, in a little bit, but I'll just finish off all of these diagonal lines so I cover the entire panel. And now I'm just going to clean up the edges using my non-stick scissors. I like these ones because they don't get all gummy. Now it does still stick to the scissors. I just had to release that with my fingers, but it doesn't make the scissors sticky. So let's use some of my favorite colors. We're going to use some purple sketch. Deco foil transfer sheets and some turquoise C fancy foils from Gina K Designs. And these are going to be beautiful when you put them on these lines just like this. I had an extra piece of this color foil in my package, so I'm going to use that one first. I just want to make sure it fits on these diagonal lines. So I'll remove that release paper and then I'll go ahead and push that down with my fingers. I like to use my bone folder, but it's my Maker Forte bone folder. It's a little bit softer on the edges, so it doesn't seem to scratch my foil as much as other bone folders I've tried. So that's why I like this one. It's nice and perfect. Look at that. So then I will release the next one, put this on, push that down with my finger, use my bone folder just a little bit. Now foil does scratch, so you wanna be very careful with it, but look at how easy that comes off and it is practically a perfect result. I just love how smooth and perfect this is with the deco foil and the score tape. If you have larger score tape or smaller score tape, you can use that as well. So let's go ahead and do the other lines with the purple. We'll alternate these colors here. I'm gonna remove a piece of that purple sketch. And this is such a big piece, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down just so that it fits the size of the panel so it's easier to work with. I'm going to use, of course, my foil cutter. I've, I've designated this as my foil cutter now. <laughs> and it's, it's my favorite, it's the Fiskars Rotary Cutter. 
It's so perfect. Maker Forte now carries this in the store. It's it's wonderful. Now on this particular piece, I started on the biggest one, so I wanted to make sure I had foil that would cover that whole thing. But look at that, it didn't fully cover that at first, so I pressed down a little bit harder with some pressure, and then it was perfect. Now you'll see in that corner, I didn't fully get the score tape in the corner. I'm gonna fix that later, so no worries. Now I'll just finish adding the foil to the rest of these stripes, and look how perfect and how easy this is. It makes a really fun background or even some fun foil elements on your card. Practically perfect every time. There we go, we're gonna peel this one up just like that. And I missed a little piece right there, so I'm just gonna take some extra foil, push that down, cover that up, there you go. Nice. Look how pretty that design is on that foil as well. I love the turquoise. We got some really great results here. Now let's go ahead and fix that corner where I missed adding some score tape there. I'm just gonna cut a small piece to cover that up with the score tape. I'll burnish it down with my bone folder and my finger. There we go, and I'm gonna have a little bit of trouble with this one here getting off that release paper. It's such a small piece. Let's get that there, but finally, finally, <laughs> there we go. I'll get that. See, I am dedicated, I don't give up. Right, crafters, we're crafters, we figure it out. So there we go, now I'm gonna add some foil to that corner and we'll get a really great result there too. Nice, so there we go. There's our foiled panel. I did miss a little bit of that corner. I'm gonna fix that with another alternative. But before we do, let's go ahead and go back to this liquid adhesive piece. It's been two days, you guys, since I came to this piece. I set it aside. I forgot about it and I'm like, oh yeah, I've got to foil that piece. I was a little bit worried because sometimes when you wait too long, the stick kind of leaves the adhesive because there's too much dust gathering or whatever, but this worked out just fine. Look at these great results. I'm gonna hold this up in just a minute. You'll see how pretty this is. Look at that. And it's like a 3D bead of foil, so it comes off the paper at you. It's not flat like when we add the score tape foil. Look at this. See that? I really, really like this technique. So now let's add some more foil around this flower. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using the Deco Foil glue pen. So this glue dries tacky. You can use any glue pen you have that dries tacky. This one is my favorite right here. It creates a nice big bead of glue there. I'm gonna add some to the center as well. And this doesn't take a few hours to dry like the liquid adhesive. This only takes minutes to dry. So while I get my foil ready, I'm just gonna set that aside, and as soon as I get my foil ready, it should be ready to add the foil. So I'm gonna cut this one here, so I have a small piece. This is the Pink Melon foil. It is a beautiful color. It's kind of like a corally pink. It's so pretty. So I'm gonna use that for around the outside of the flower, but for the inside, I wanted to use a different color. I think I'm gonna go in with some of that copper this is a great way to use up some of your foil scraps as well. I still have a good amount of foil on these scraps here, so I decided that that copper was going to look really great in the center. I'm just making sure this is dry here. I'm checking to make sure, and it is. So let's go ahead and add the foil. So I'm gonna cut a smaller piece of this copper foil to put in the center. I didn't want it to stick around that bead of glue we have on the outside, so that's why I cut a smaller piece because the pink melon is gonna be for around the outside. So I'm just gonna press it down, pull it up, and press it down, give it some more pressure so that it sticks on all of the spots. Why am I not using my bone folder? I don't know, but it works with your finger as well. <laughs> now I'll go ahead and put that pink melon around the outside, burnish that down with my finger here, make sure that it has contact with all that glue, and look at this result. I missed a few little pieces, so I'm going back in with that foil, but look at how coloring with foil is so easy, so fast, and there's another piece right there I missed. I am a little bit of a foiling perfectionist. <laughs> I like 
I like to get a good foil result. So there we go. And there you have it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and let's put our card together. My idea was to go ahead and use the dots that we created earlier with the glue dots and use that as our card panel. And I'm gonna use that wonderful world sentiment that comes in with these flowers. But I wanted to have a frame around this and I thought I would cut it down and just mat it on some paper, but I thought, hey, we're talking about foil today. <laughs> so let's create a foiled frame. So I'm using some smaller score tape here all around the edges and I'm just placing it all around in a stripe, lining it up with the edge of the paper so that we're gonna get a foiled matte look. So once I do that, I'm gonna trim off the excess here and then I'll release one of them at a time of the, of the release paper. I'm gonna burnish that down with my bone folder first and then release one at a time and add some foil. Now for this, I got some new foil out. This is the Peach Princess Foil from Deco Foil in the tubes and I really like this color and I thought it would complement everything we had going on here. So that's what I'm using. It's brand new and it sticks really well to the score tape. If I can get that release paper off, we'll be in business here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do this second line of score tape, pressing it down with my finger. You can use your bone folder as well, but this worked really well with the score tape. So I'll continue to do that around all four sides. We're gonna get a really nice look. For the corners that we miss, if you have any corners that are missed, you can use your glue pen, the uh, Decofoil adhesive pen, to clean up those corners a little bit, but we got a pretty good result on most of these corners here. I lined them up very, very close together. We'll just press down on what we missed there, and there you go. So there's our mat. So it does look like a mat without having to cut that down and add another piece of paper to it. And now we'll go ahead and put our flower on somewhere just like this. And for the sentiment, I'm just gonna use the part that says, what a wonderful world. So I am using some tape. Sorry, I've got a little bit out of focus here. I don't know why my camera is not focusing, but I used some tape to tape off that part of the sentiment that I didn't want to use. And then I just inked up the rest of it with some Eclipse Black ink. I'll push that down with my ink smusher and I missed a spot in the center there, so I'll go ahead and fix that. And there is our sentiment, what a wonderful world. To add the flower, I'm just gonna go ahead and add that with some foam adhesive. Pop that up right there, and then we'll add this entire thing to a card base. And that's gonna finish off this card. So we've got three different foiling strategies on this card. We've got the glue dots, we've got the liquid adhesive there, and we have the adhesive pen. Oh, and the score tape, so that's four. So that's a fun card. Now I'm excited to share with you these adhesive transfers that are from Decofoil. This is my first time using the adhesive transfers. I'm gonna show you what not to do <laughs> and then show you the results that we get. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and just stencil on a little bit of this background. This is called En Peri, and it is a really beautiful stencil. I love this one. I'm gonna use Lady Liberty on this one and then go ahead and ink it up, kind of darker in the center, going out lighter towards the edges. And this is just gonna create a nice little background for our adhesive transfer. I'm gonna use this dragonfly on here. Look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's how you use these. Uh, you go ahead and cut this out. First of all, you cut out the image that you want. So I'm just kind of cutting kind of close around where this is. And then I'll cut off that little extra heart there, but save that because you can still use that for another project. And then I'm gonna cut out the sentiment, which is follow your dream. I couldn't resist using this one with the dragonfly. I think it's beautiful. And now what you wanna do is you want to remove the backing to this sheet. And what you're gonna be left with is a little bit of stickiness on the back of that sheet. I had to cut a little bit off there. And then look at this, I dropped it. Don't do that. 
because <laughs> what it did is it removed some of the the stickiness for this image so I was really kind of upset with myself that I did that but I'm going to show you how to fix it of course we're not going to waste a dragonfly now unless you get rid of all the stickiness and you can't save it then oh that's too bad but Here's how you use it. So once I have that stuck down, now I'm going to use it through my die cut machine. I have made a piece of computer paper here as a shim and also to protect my panel. But as I ran it through, I realized it wasn't creating enough pressure. So I added another cardstock shim to that, to the top. So I'm gonna find one here and run that through once again. I wanna make sure to get enough pressure so that this will stick to my panel. You can also use a laminator for this, but today we're talking about no heat transfers. So I wanted to show you how to use this without any heat at all. And you get a great, great result. So look at this. I am going to now cut some shattered rainbow foil. I actually had a piece that would fit right over that dragonfly perfectly. So that's what, what I'm going to use. I'll cut it down just a little with my rotary scissors here, my rotary trimmer, and that's gonna be perfect for that. And then you remove the top part of this transfer and you're left with the sticky part. So put your foil right over the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and roll up the rest of that foil, put that away, and then I'm gonna cut some foil for the sentiment at the same time. We'll apply pressure to these at the same exact time, but I'm gonna save that dragonfly. See the black part that I just pulled off? I'm gonna save that. I think I can use that on something else. So here's the peach melon again, or pink melon, and I'm gonna use that for the sentiment. And then what we're gonna do is run it once again through the die cut machine. I'm using my cardstock shim again and my computer paper to protect the panel. And then just for good measure, I'm pressing that down with my bone folder and look how it loosens that up. Do you see the dragonfly wing? Look at that. Oh goodness, it's so pretty. Now the part that did not adhere was my fault because I dropped it and so some of that stick came off. But look at this, watch the follow your dream is perfect. I am so impressed with these adhesive transfers, you guys. They're so fun. So how are we gonna fix that? But with our Decofoil adhesive pen to the rescue. Now this comes out a little bit thicker than the lines on this image. So I'm pressing really light here. So that I just get a small amount of that uh, that adhesive, the tackiness, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the foil once again. I can't get over how cute this dragonfly is. <laughs> See, here's me just admiring it again. While I'm waiting for the adhesive to dry, I love it. So I'll set that aside for another project. Now that this is dry, it is tacky to the touch. So I'm gonna put that foil right over the top once again, the same one that I used before. I'll burnish it on with my finger, pull it up, and it worked. Now you can see the line is a little bit thicker, but it did fix the issues mostly, and you'll never know the difference. It's so pretty. Look at that result. And that's really all you need to create a card. I am gonna cut this down and add a mat around it, frame, but that's going to be a simple and easy, wonderful card. Now let's move on to finish up some of these other cards. Last time we got together for Foiling Friday, we were talking about sharks. Who was that? <laughs> Somebody was bringing up Shark Week, and so I had to use sharks on a card today with our foil. <laughs> so I'm just going to color these sharks up very simply. This is from our brand new stamp set called Shark Attack. There's lots of cute sharks in that stamp set. In fact, they're all different sizes. Most of them are really happy and smiley. I chose the smallest one to use because I wanted to use three of them on our card today. So that's the one I chose, but check that stamp set out. It's super cute. Now I'm gonna cut these out. This is gonna be three, all three are gonna fit on our card. Of course, I had to use our purples and blues like the, like the background here. This is the background we're gonna use for this particular stamp set, the one with the score tape lines. So I have gone ahead and added these 
sharks and I thought they would be a lot safer behind glass. <laughs> so I'm turning this into a faux shaker card. I've already added some acetate to a frame. I just cut this frame out using our rectangle die cuts. I used two different rectangles at the same time to cut out this frame. And on the bottom, I stamped the sentiment, hope your day is jawsome. I added a few of those clear bubble sequins to the shark so it looked like they were kind of breathing. <laughs> and that's gonna finish that card. I have a couple more foiling techniques with no heat. This one here is the Deco Foil Foam Adhesive. And this is really cool because it is a foam, but it's got sticky on both sides of the foam. So you can die cut this out and use it on any of your projects. Now I love using this foam on larger die cuts, larger images, those types of things, but I thought I would give it a try on these happy birthday die words. This wasn't the best idea and I'm gonna show you why, because the best way I found to use this foam adhesive is to adhere it to your project and then remove the top portion of the sticker so you can add your foil. But I wanted to see if this would work first and you're gonna see exactly what happens here. So I'm just getting this all ready and I thought I could use it on this beautiful butterfly panel. This panel is what I use the Decofoil adhesive pen on to add some dots and some gold foil. So I thought a gold foiled sentiment would be so pretty on this panel. You guys, this stuff is sticky. Look at how I'm struggling. <laughs> I removed the top part, but now I don't have a place to put this so that it doesn't stick. And I figured out a better way, so wait for that. I thought maybe it would stick on my, my sticky stamp mat here, but that didn't work. So I'm using my tweezers to kind of keep it off of my fingers and then I'm gonna place it onto this beautiful foil. This is the Maker Forte Sunrise Lake foil. And look how great this is. I just burnish it onto that foam and then remove that from the foil and the foil sticks so beautifully. This stuff is really, really sticky. So look how great a job that does. I mean, it's perfect. It's a great result. And that's gonna look really great on there. So for the birthday, I got a little bit smarter. I removed the top part of the sticky, trying not to touch it too much with my fingers, very carefully there. And then I put it right down on my foil, just like that. And that worked a little bit better. I'm gonna burnish that with my fingers only. And you'll see that this really sticks. So I'll just make sure that's ready to go. Peel that off and look at what a great, beautiful sentiment we have. And I really, really love it. Now, I'm gonna recommend a different technique if you want to do a sentiment because here's where I fell down. I thought it would be great to put it on a black backer so I had like a shadow, so this would really pop, but it didn't work. So some of you are asking, well, why can't you just foil your sentiment using some double-sided adhesive. The double-sided adhesive I have, it didn't work with. If you have some score tape though, that is larger, then try that. So I put this double-sided adhesive down on my cardstock and I left it in there when I pulled off that top part and then I foiled it or I tried to burnish it so that it would stick well enough, but it just wouldn't stick to this particular adhesive very well. So like I say, if you have the larger score tape, I think that might work, but this does not work this way. It works so great with the foam adhesive, but not so great <laughs> with this way. And watch, eventually I tear this and it is just unusable. So that was a question I got a lot was how you can foil your sentiments. I like to foil my sentiments using heat. I would much rather use some blank canvas and then die cut that, add some foil and run it through my laminator. So that's a better solution. If you don't have a laminator though or a heat source, then we're gonna come up with some different ideas. So here's where I thought I'm gonna get smart. And I'm just gonna remove a part of that adhesive at a time 
and place it on my black shadow piece, just a little bit at a time. But this was so sticky, it ended up sticking to each other. It stuck to my fingers. I couldn't get it lined up correctly. So I'm not going to recommend this for die cutting intricate words like this. I eventually gave up. I couldn't get it to work out perfectly. So I have a better use for that foam adhesive and I'm going to show you that now. <laughs> So instead of using such a small intricate piece, I'm going to use a background die. This is the square matrix die from Maker Forte. I love this die. I thought it would look great popped up on foam on a background for a card. So I die cut this out and it die cuts beautifully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop all those inside pieces out and put it on my background first. So I started popping it out and then I thought, you know what, maybe I can use those on a different background. But who has time to remove the backer to all those little pieces and put it on a different background? So I decided, no, I'm just going to take these out and put those aside and I'll either throw them away or use them at a different time. So I saved all those, I put those aside and then I peeled off the back part of the foam adhesive. And this is a little bit tricky. Again, like I say, this stuff is very sticky. It works so well, but it sticks to your fingers. So I started peeling this off and then I placed a little bit at a time to my cardstock background and then I peeled even more off and stuck it down and that seemed to work out the best way that I could figure out. And I got a really good result for this one. So I'm just placing that down, sticking it to my cardstock background and the adhesive uh, release paper is still on the front so that's going to be ready for foiling in just a minute. So I'm going to just remove that part, set aside all those inside pieces, and I'm going to use this Tide Pool foil for this one. I thought this would be kind of pretty and a little bit different for a ocean background. So that's what I decided to use. I'm just going to fold that over onto the sticky part of itself, and then I'll cut off a piece of this Tide Pool foil using my fabulous rotary cutter. It's now my foil cutter. So my foil cutter, and that works out so fast and so easy. And then I'll take the backer off or the release paper off, and then I'll add the foil all at once. So this worked out so much better when I had this attached to the cardstock and then added the foil. So that's my favorite way to use this foam adhesive. I'm just making sure I got all that release paper off before adding the foil and then I'll add the foil all at once and press it down to get all of the bubbles out and just burnish that with my fingers. This is already sticking I can tell so when I pull it off it comes off perfect. Look at that. This foam adhesive is really kind of amazing. Now I did get a little bit excess foil like in places just like this. So I took my magic wand and just cleaned up those places using that poker side. And if I missed any foil, I added it a little bit here and there and peeled it off and it stuck really well. So I got a, a pretty good result with this. Now I'll just trim down the rest of this and I'm gonna turn this into a card for you. I'm gonna be using some of our brand new stamp sets that just recently came out. I don't know if you've seen these yet, so I couldn't wait to use more of these on a card. I have the narwhals from the Your Gnarly stamp set. That wave is from Mar Modern Waves stamp set. And the mermaid is from Underwater Adventures. And I went ahead and I stamped onto our vellum some, an, a sentiment and to put that down, I'm using our No Show Maker's Magic. Now, I have not used this No Show before, but I wanted to test it out on our vellum, and it worked out so great. So I can't wait to try that again. I just put a few dots down and then placed an acrylic block over the top for that to dry completely. But see how you can still see through the vellum to the foil? I thought that was kind of fun. And then for our mermaid, she needed some foil 
accents. So I'm using the Decofoil adhesive pen again and just adding a few of the scales to uh, be a little bit sticky so I can add some foil. And I'm doing this in just, just a few places, not very many, just enough to give her some, some shiny foil. I'm using this plum foil right here. And while that adhesive pen is drying, I'll just go ahead and use some liquid adhesive to attach the narwhals. I colored these up really simply with some Copic markers. And for that wave, I colored it up using some ink blending. So just a couple shades of blue and I ink blended that right on. I think I used Welsh Dragon. That sounds like me. <laughs> it's probably Welsh Dragon. And then here we go, adding that foil accent. I'm gonna burnish that with the bone folder here. Peel that off and we've got some foiled mermaid scales. You can do this in all different colors. I think it would look so pretty in different colors as well. It looks like I have purple and blue on my mind today. Most of our cards are made with that color scheme. So I added some more and then I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool to have some golden highlights in her hair or copper highlights in her hair even? So I went ahead and added some small lines of that adhesive pen to her hair as well. And I'll add some of that copper again. Since I have these pieces of foil that are just extra, I thought it would be cool just to use them up. So here we go, adding that copper to her hair. It's sort of a cool look. Lots of foil going on today, but that's what our topic is, right? <laughs> I love foil. So there she is. I missed a spot right here, so I'm just gonna fix that right there. Make sure I got all of the sticky spots. And any part where I need to clean it up a little, I'll just use my craft knife. I wanted those lines still to show on her hair that I stamped out. So I am just cleaning this up just a little bit to make sure you can still see those. And then I'll add her with some foam adhesive to our card. So she's gonna look perfect. Look at that, look at her scales and her hair, accents. It's just a really fun look for this little mermaid. So I've added her here and now I'm going to trim off any excess on the sides for the waves and the sentiment. And that's gonna give us a perfect panel to add to our slimline card. And that'll finish off this card right here. There's a lot of foil going on, a lot of, a lot of interest on this card. But take a look, you are absolutely mermazing. I heat emboss that with our new Ocean Bubble Embossing Powder. I believe that's the one I used there. And then look at that foil background, really fun. So yes, I did place those extra pieces onto a card base. I didn't have time to foil that up for today's video, but I will be using that in the future. And now for our last technique, and that is Decofoil Gel Duo. I got a lot of questions. The most questions was, can you use the Decofoil Gel Duo on photopolymer stamps, on your clear stamps? And so I reached out to ThermalWeb to ask just to make sure, and they said, yes, it is a water-based product. So as long as you wash it off right away, it's not gonna harm your stamps. You can definitely use it. So I was dying to use it on this beautiful stamp that is brand new. It's called Beacon of Light, and this particular stamp is the one that looks like brushes, watermark brushes. And I thought this is gonna be so gorgeous with the Decofoil Gel Duo adding some foil to that background. So I have a foam, a domed foam tool here. This is dedicated only to my Decofoil Gel. And so I use that to add a little bit, just pounce it on lightly onto the stamp. And I'm not sure if I got all of it on this first one, but I'm gonna press that down here and we're just gonna test this out today and see how it works. I'm using my ink smusher to help push that down. And this Decofoil Gel Duo is very sticky, so of course it did stick to my stamp, but I just peeled that off 
And look at that. I'm going to set that aside to dry, but let's do one more while we're here. So this time I'm going to pounce a little bit more of that gel on. Make sure I get all of the areas and then I will stamp that down onto my card panel. This time I'm using some Nina Desert Storm cardstock. This would also look beautiful on Cappuccino cardstock from Maker Forte or whatever you want to use. But there we go. There's that second one. I'm going to set that aside to dry. And then I had a little bit excess of the De Decafoil Gel Duo. So I'm going to just paint it on with a paintbrush. And let's see how this turns out. I wanted to definitely address that today to see if you could paint on the Decafoil gel and if it would turn out nicely or if you could use it with your clear stamps. Now just a note, you're not going to get as clear as an impression with your stamps. Oh, by the way, I washed it off with warm water using my Squid Buddy here that's called Squeegee. That's the name of my Squid Buddy and it cleaned off perfectly. The stamp works perfectly. It was absolutely fantastic. For these backgrounds, I'm going to use the Maker Forte Heart of the Ocean foil and the Blue Waves Deco Foil transfer sheets as well. These are all available in the shop, and this is one of my favorites. It's so pretty. So let's try this one first on the background that we painted on with the paintbrush. These are all dry. By the way, I set them aside for a little while. I think I waited about an hour for these ones to dry and it worked out just fine. So I'm gonna press them on with my finger and then I'll use my bone folder to burnish that on even more. Now you can run this through your die cut machine to get even more pressure, but I just wanted to try it just using the bone folder and look at the results. Now it had a hard time coming off right here, but once I got that going, look at this. A really pretty distressed painted look. I really liked how it turned out. So I couldn't wait to try it on those stamped backgrounds. I think it worked out even better with the stamp. So let's try it. I'm going to take this one here and you can see that some of the spots were missing. It's not all going to be perfect. As I was mentioning before, this is going to give you more of a distressed look with your foil when you're using the Decafoil Duo Gel on stamps. I really like using it on stamps though, especially rubber stamps, but it worked out great with these photopolymer stamps. But look at this. That was not enough pressure to make it work on the stamp. So I'm going to cut this foil down a little bit. I'm using my scissors because I have my craft mat down there and I didn't want to cut my craft mat using my rotary cutter. So I just used my scissors and I ran it through my die cut machine and now look at this. It needed some pressure. So always, always keep trying. And I love the way that turned out. As I say, it is more distressed, it's not perfect, but it looks really cool. And especially that was the look I was going for with this painted background. It's kind of a distressed look anyway, it's painterly. So let's try using this Ocean Waves one. And now I know that when you're using it on a stamp, that you definitely want to run it through your die cut machine to get enough pressure. You could also run this through a laminator, but today is all about no heat. So this time I removed that craft mat because, you know, I have to use that foil cutter. <laughs> and I'm going to cut that down so that it will fit in my die cut machine. Look how fast this is. I just closed off, or I opened up that. For some reason, I kept cutting the cardstock as well. <laughs> but it's way faster when you use that just on the foil. So perfect. I ran that through my die cut machine and now I'm going to put the rest of that foil away to use later and watch this. Look at that. Definitely distressed, but really, really cool. So I think I got more distress on this one. This was the first one I did because I didn't put nearly enough of the gel on there. I'm going to try to get a little bit more on by burnishing it with my bone folder. Sorry for the wiggling there. And that did help a little bit. So there are our results here. And I'm just going to put together some simple cards using the stamped background there. I've stamped out a couple of the sailboats from that same beacon of light. The ones on the left I, I stamped with some fog ink and then I no line colored them with Copic markers. 
The ones on the right I stamped with some flat white ink and I didn't color them at all. I just wanted kind of a rustic look to match the background. Now I'll pop those up with some foam tape. I stamped out a sentiment that says, life is better by the sea. That sentiment is from the same Beacon of Light stamp set. And then I used another stamp set for the sentiment on the darker blue one. So I'll show you that, but to put these together, I'm using my tweezers just to add everything with foam adhesive, and then I'll add that to my card base. I cut this down so that I would have a white mat showing all around the edges there. And I'm just gonna put that on just like so, and that'll be a nice simple card, but it's so pretty with that foil in the background. It's kind of a soft sailboat look there really really fun so for this one the sentiment i use says let's go to the sea and it's from this stamp set right here called true north some beautiful images in that one as well i'm going to straighten that up a little bit again i cut that down so that it would have white all showing all around the edges and those are some simple easy cards so there are there we go i'm going to remind you of all the techniques that we did today the paintbrush look we use some deco foil gel on some clear stamps today and then we also did a lot of other strategies and techniques using no heat whatsoever so let's bring out all those cards and go through them here's the one we added with the deco foil adhesive pen I did these ones off screen. I added some dots on the one on the left on the butterfly, and then just some lines to add to these seashells. That's from another one of our new stamp sets as well. So pretty, and I, I used some score tape on this one with the sharks. Did a faux shaker card with this one using some acetate, and that's from our shark attack stamp set. And then for this one, we used a lot of other techniques. This one has the liquid adhesive, the, the dots, and the also the adhesive pen and some score tape on that one. And here's another look at that liquid adhesive using a stencil first and then adding the liquid adhesive and some foil over the top. I used the turquoise C foil on that one. And then this is the one we use those adhesive sheets on. And it turned out so pretty with the stencil and then the adhesive design and the adhesive sentiment. I'm running out of room here <laughs> to put all these. And then here's the one with the foam adhesive that we did the whole entire background. So there's so many ways that you can add foil to your cards without any heat at all. So if you don't have a laminator or you don't have a mink machine, then you still have options to use foil on your cards. So many options, and I don't even think this is all of them. There's probably more. Now don't forget we have our foil bundle that is available with this Foiling Friday. We'll link it in the description below so you can check that out. I didn't receive that in time for me to share with you in this video, but don't forget to go take a look because there's some beautiful products. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It really helps out with YouTube. And I can't wait to see you for another Foiling Friday. Enjoy your foiling. Bye-bye.